Hey everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. Welcome to a napkin journal tutorial. So I'm using this napkin from ninniesnapkins.com. It's called Noble Peacock and you can see it has four identical images. Two of them are actually looking to the left and two of them are looking to the right. First thing you want to do to prepare is peel off the two extra plies. I like to take a piece of masking tape and stick it on the corner and to help me grab the sheet and I pull that off. That goes into a bin and I save it because I can find uses for that in my art journaling. So the best way that I know that I've found for myself to cut this out is to water cut it. And I'm using a liner brush and a very little bit of water. I run the brush where I want it to go and then I peel it back kind of section by section, slow and steady wins the race. If you don't want to practice on your good napkins, you can take the white plies, draw circles or draw shapes, and practice water cutting to build confidence. So I do cut out two of these peacocks. But sometimes I cut the, cut things out and then I play around with composition and then I make my final decisions because they sometimes I need more, sometimes I need less because things don't quite work out exactly. And it's hard to do uh, when you don't have them cut out. So this stencil is called Peacock Doily, so which is obviously why I've matched it up with the Peacock napkin. And this this Stencil can also be purchased at Ninny's Napkins, and the, the links are in the description box below. So I put modeling paste through the stencil, and now I am getting rid of bits that I don't want. And you can always do that, and this page has not been prepped, there's no gesso on it at this stage. So it's got I put the modeling paste right on raw paper, and it's still very, very easy with a a palette knife to get it off. So while that's drying, I am gluing the peacocks, the napkin peacocks, onto just plain old copy paper. And the reason I'm doing this is I plan on doing a bluish green background. And I don't want to lose the vividness of the colors that are in the napkin. And then I'm just cutting this out. Now I'm getting ready to apply color to my background. And I know I'm going to add the colors and use the colors that were in the napkin, the yellow, the teal, turquoise, and the blue. And I'm adding gesso here and I'm keeping, I'm working quite quickly. And the gesso is actually still wet when I start to apply paint. And that softens the paint. Paint helps it blend a little bit, gives you extra different tones. It's something that I've just started doing this year, and I really like how that works. So I use cadmium yellow, and here I'm using, I believe it's cobalt teal. But any turquoise or teal color and both of these happen to be deco art americana premium paints most of the time i do use liquitex basics i bought a bunch of these they were great deal and just testing the focal image on there to see if the colors are work going to work together Don't worry so much if there's brush marks or finger marks or block, you know, areas that are blocked because we're going to add a lot of stenciling and that's going to push things back and cover things up and make it all work together. If you add gesso to the paint, it makes the paint more opaque as well as a little bit lighter. So you get different hues or tones, and I might be using those terms incorrectly, but you know what I mean. Now 
Now I have the same peacock doily stencil and I'm going to use the white gesso with a makeup sponge and I'm going to stencil on there. Often when I start I put a, a stencil with white that pushes the colors back and it gives a base for the other colors that I'm going to use to stand up on. And in this case, I'm going to use that cobalt teal again. And I want it to be brighter than what's already down there. And by putting the layer of, the, of white there, that helps that pop. I'm liking how this looks. My idea here is that the entire background is going to look like a peacock tail. At this point, I'm not 100% sure of the composition. I'm not even sure which orientation I'm going to go. Still with the same stencil. I'm coming in with the cobalt teal. Now, if you go like here, if you're putting a layer and you don't really like how it ended up, and you're thinking, oh, I should have left it. All that means is that you're not done yet. It means you have another layer to add. Try white, try a darker color, try to build in some contrast. It just means you're not done. playing with composition, and now I want to select a sentiment so I can finalize where I'm going to put the peacock. So this is my sentiment binder. I've printed out all my sentiments, and then I can flip through them and read them and then find which pack it's from, and then either go, and there's a pouch behind each pack where I have the parts that, the sentiments that may be already cut out, and, or print it off. So I've chosen the sentiment from the BU pack that says beauty begins the moment you begin you decide to be yourself. And I love that sentiment. Here I'm showing that I did take the sentiment and I did shrink it down. And that's something that you can do with my sentiments but you will be doing that through your printer settings. And I will be making a video about giving you more details on that, although you will have to play with your specific printer and kind of figure it out what works for you. Now I'm missing some contrast in the background. So I decided to come in with some blue because that's also in the napkin. And I grabbed this petal burst stencil. And it reminded me of a peacock with his tail fanned open. And it's round like the peacock doily. So there's similarities between the stencils that I've chosen to use together. For me, I wouldn't be putting a stencil here that is, you know, diamond shape or um, squares because I, I don't think they work together. But using stencils that have similar aspects, roundness, um, for instance, works for me. That being said, there are no rules. So... Do what you feel, feel is best. So now I want to bring up the texture from the modeling paste. And I've got some of that dark blue paint on the makeup sponge. And I'm just lightly brushing it over top of this. And of course, the higher areas are picking up the color and just making that pop. Still playing with the composition. Edging the peacock, getting rid of some of that white. I 
I'm unsure yet. I don't want to commit, so I'm going to shade the outside of my page. And sometimes that's a great plan. Give yourself some time. If you're not sure what the next step is, let it sit overnight. Take pictures of it. Put it up on the mantle and look at it from a distance. Sometimes that just gives a little bit different perspective and then you can move on with the page. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do me a favor. Go to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. You can see what I'm up to, works in progress, and other interesting things. It's a little bit more shading on the peacocks. Adding a little bit of black, I just want to bring it out a little bit more, and you can see how much that made it pop. One peacock didn't seem to be enough on this page. Two seemed to be almost too much. Would you have put one, or would you have gone with two? Using the makeup sponge with the black paint, going around the edge to frame the sentiment. Now I'm going to use gel medium instead of the fluid medium here. The reason being this is fairly thick because it's, a, it's got the napkin and a layer of copy paper and sometimes it's easier to use the gel medium for that. The, mat, the fluid medium would work as well. You just might have to push it down and work it a little bit more to get it to do what you want. This gel medium, it goes on and it's kind of cloudy. It dries perfectly clear. And of course it's a matte finish because I don't, I don't like the shine. Not on my art journal pages anyways. Have you joined my Facebook group? It's called Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Check me out. So after drawing this, I'm going to do a little bit of shading around the peacocks just to make them stand out from the background. I'm using the technique called floating acrylics. And if you do a search in my channel, you can find the video that teaches how to do that technique if that's something that you're interested in. I also shaded around the sentiment as you can see on the top. The shading and the fine tuning, the details and the finishing at the end, those typically take a long time. Do throwing down the background is the quick and easy part. This is the detail part. You're using less paint but more time. taking off the tape and I put that tape there to keep all the modeling paste and paint out of the coils and to give me this nice straight edge. 
I also only do one side of the page in these art journals. I'm adding a little bit of gold here. So I want to add just a little bit of shimmer. You can't, it's not picking up on the camera. And I'm going to splatter with gold as well. And then I decide I want to splatter a little bit with black as well. Just was missing something. Sometimes it's hard to know when you're done. Here are some close-ups of the finish page. I like the deep richness of the background. There's the napkin before and after. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give some of these ideas a try. I hope you join my Facebook group and share what you create. Love to see it. Bye for now.